Hey everybody, this is Jaster269 here, and welcome to my reaction on the Overwatch 2 uh, reveal data, revealing something hopefully insane. And I'm going to hope it's going to be something crazy. I was very hyped seeing the new details. Three, two, one. All right, starting. RPT. Here we go. Uh, this was uh, this might be the same trailer they showed off at. Um, what was it? Ah, this is the same trailer they had at the Xbox Bethesda Showcase, which absolutely blew my mind, uh, in a lot of ways. I was, um, it was, it was, I don't know why it was so crazy just seeing it at, uh, at the Xbox Showcase, but this is the same trailer. They already also announced that the beta is happening June 28th. Um, so that's cool. Uh, I, it also, I had also said that signups start today. So after this uh, reaction, I will definitely sign up and uh, hope to get into the beta again. I was in the first beta, wasn't a huge fan because I am a support man. Um, I'm hopeful that a lot more of Overwatch 2 uh, will be in it, because it didn't really feel like a lot was in it. Uh, it didn't feel like a huge step up from Overwatch 1, except for the different lighting, FSR, um, and yeah, it was not a whole lot, um, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that this will this will be more. Here we go. Hello everyone. I, I am the only other thing I know earlier this week the community um, was treated to some massive that they're premiering to do animated short for Junker Queen. Of course, the which is the announcement by far was the news I'm that so glad will arrive they on showed off another hero As coming. An always on, always evolving a tease of the next support that will be free to play. For everyone. Now, if you're like me, you're eager to learn more. And that is why I'm here today at the Blizzard campus to better understand the decisions behind the announcements, find out what they mean for the players, and with some luck, uncover a few new game details for you at home. And be sure with to some luck. Uh, I want to I want to the new cinematic more The Wastelander, which was I want some details. just a few days ago. So with that, let's get into it. There I, I feel like if they're gonna announce a battle pass, it's gonna be here. That might be with the s surprise or extra thing they're giving a uh, founders or the founders pack for people that already owned the first game before the 23rd, which I'm okay Join with. Me, our Overwatch game director um, Keller and production director more, Paul more free Ayo stuff. I don't know about the battle pass yet. If it's implemented properly, I'm okay with yes, it. Me too. So but the game being free to play is this. the biggest and concern so right now. now uh, that was a ton of news. Because the game originally costing and the community having a price. Buzzing. And I'm excited um, to be able to sit down with you two now to You know, it, the loot boxes were just cosmetics. Now, uh, nothing that was performance enhancing. to be the news that Overwatch 2 is releasing on October 4th. As a free to play life service. And they're, they're them calling it a life service is very, very, very exciting uh, for you and your team. Um, yeah, Overwatch very interested. It's been a labor of love for our, our team. We're all dedicated to creating a game that our community will enjoy for years to come. We also want players to feel like there was always something new for them to play or experience in the game. These goals really led us down the path of developing Overwatch 2 as an always on living game. One that continues to evolve and okay. expand through nine-week seasonal model and keeps the game as fresh cross progression. And fun to play <gasps> cross progression. Long after it turns <gasps> we're lucky to have new hero every other season. And creative set of Are they confirming and a new hero every 18 weeks? Craving 
more ways to play the game they love so, so much. So every like in recent years. So three heroes a year. Good enough job at delivering that okay. for our fans, and we feel better than zero the past uh, over two look at years. Our for That's fine. <laughs> to make sure that we could deliver so, new heroes, new maps, but they're starting. Modes, oh, that was more to the something. On a frequent so, and consistent basis. I'm gonna assume Sojourn five, and Junker Queen are day one, though. Junker Queen you know, is that's the day one, and obviously Sojourn is good to go like right for early, early, access. early access. It was in the first be beta. Junker Queen's gonna be in the well second beta. How are you and the team planning to deliver on that promise? Uh, well, the very first step is getting the game into everyone's hands, and that's going to happen on October 4th when we transition Overwatch <gasps> and invite every PC and console player to drop in and experience Overwatch. Oh, they're just full on transitioning. And that's just the beginning. Our plan is to deliver a steady drumbeat of new content every So even though it's early access, updates, Overwatch 1 is dead October 4th. Play, chase, that's fine. That's going to bring everyone in to well, Overwatch 2. That all sounds amazing. It's that's so perfectly okay too. with me. And now, I am sure everyone at home wants to hear more details. Of course, uh, I'd be happy to share a look at the road ahead. Here we go. Our journey is going to begin on October 4th, when Overwatch 2 releases free to play. This includes three, three new heroes, mythic skin? six new maps, three. New Yo! Heroes, the new heroes include Sojourn. The they're gonna show off the support. Junker Queen. Yeah. And a brand new support hero that we'll reveal in the months. Oh. Our new map wow. will take players across the globe. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, conditions. good. Our new PVP mode called Push. Every um. In new and exciting ways. Players will also be able to unlock new cosmetic items through the <gasps> game store. Oh, that's cool. And battle pass. As well as complete weekly Ooh. challenges and experience the start battle of pass. competitive battle pass. That's the battle pass. Oh, course, wait. What's competitive play 2.0? Oh. Hold on. <laughs> heroes, PvP maps, and fan favorite game modes from the first Overwatch game. Our next season will okay. arrive in early December. Whoa, new, new tank hero. New tank hero. Okay. Along with a new, new battle pass. We'll have more themed cosmetic Is the battle pass? To earn and unlock in an all new battle pass and also in the in game store. And in 2023, we'll continue to release a new season every nine weeks. Okay, they're confirming PVEs hero, next year. Map or new mode. Players will get the chance to earn more themed content. Okay, that's good. Weekly challenges, um, access new battle passes, and more. There will always be something new to play. Nice, nice, nice. In 2023, we'll also begin releasing our new PVE experiences, which we're really excited about. We're Any really details looking forward on that? to being able to share more with the community as we get closer. Okay, to never mind. I know we've seen more and more games shift towards that. Wow, that was a lot of details in one years, in one go. It does seem like players have taken a liking to it, especially shooter fans. Um, did that have an impact on deciding to make Overwatch 2 uh, go free to play? Honestly, not really. For us, free to play games offer a lot of advantages. From the very start, Overwatch was designed to be a social experience. We have heroes of different roles, and they all rely on each other in in order to accomplish their objectives in the game. So. It requires a lot of teamwork. We also see that outside of our game, within our community, with fan art, cosplay, and the Overwatch League. We know our fans are having the most fun when they're playing with their friends or meeting new ones. And the move to I wonder if the 30 makes it easy for everyone over 30 to skins in, play the game, join are the just brand new skins and not just the one or not. And with model revamps. Enabled, people can play together no matter what platform they prefer to play on. It's always been a game that stood for inclusivity and community now i saw when cross progression i don't heroes, think i don't know if they actually they mentioned that to feel like there's someone there that they can feel connected oh to because oh wait no this is already is and always oh will that's be a new place for everyone because we feel Junker queen like we have an incredible opportunity with overwatch 2 to really embrace it I can't wait for October when this incredible journey will begin for all of us. Now that we have a better understanding of what's to come, I'd love to dive a little deeper, uh, starting with Overwatch 2's new approach. Okay, here we go. Can you maybe elaborate? New approach. I mean, the 5v5, PvP if that's what they're focusing on. The heart of the Overwatch experience, and we've made some tweaks to it over the years, but Overwatch 2 really gave us the opportunity to put the mode under a microscope. And we really wanted players to feel that so, they had more impact in a match. I guess when and they oh, made significant fundamental new models. changes that we just I guess when they focused on the um, live game, this was a foundational shift that changed everything. Heroes, maps, uh, so we had to reevaluate every aspect of PvP to ensure we got it right. We've been encouraged by player feedback from the first beta, and we will continue to make updates and improvements in the game.
Well, earlier today, I had a chance to see yeah, that was very additional members of non specific the and hear more about all the work they're doing to really find wow, they the just dove right in so, let's take a look. with a bunch of new details. And it kind of feels like gets us up in the morning. They don't have a lot more to talk about. It's first and foremost a really special game. The way we portray I want them to talk a little bit about, about the beta this Everyone month at least. Really proud of We're bringing an all new PvP experience. We're transforming from a 6v6 to a 5v5. Changed a lot of how we design heroes and actually how we balance them as well. We had to go back and look at all the heroes and all the tanks especially and make sure that everyone fits and works really well in this new paradigm. This newfound importance on each individual player to feel like they can really make an impact on the game. We're trying to obviously maintain the original character's identity and overall silhouette, colors, statements but also kind of bring something a little bit new. We can make balance adjustments really quick, okay. as fast as our design team sees that there's an issue. Jeff Goodman and the rest of the hero design team have been... I guess now that it's free to play, in. maybe they balance adjustments awesome are going to be more about, common. Uh, how to change or uh, adjust I don't know balance. how the two connect, so but like I feel like, like a, a major that actually makes we're sense. At how many barriers are in place. You think about Overwatch, you think of these really protective shields. But we're looking at it from the perspective of, you know, what if she... I'm curious that? what, what character's going to be we're just always OP great opportunities day one, though, like better. Roadhog was... I'm really excited about how we've refreshed uh, all the maps. I think we've done a lot of great changes, especially for PvP. A lot of our old I stuff still feel is like gorgeous now. if the we've second beta of is based off the code of Overwatch 1, which this, um, the first beta more. was, we also added I still feel like there won't be a lot of like huge changes time. outside of, I think all of the Overwatch Sojourn. Maps. Junker Queen. Recorded in the actual place. Uh, We've hired a field recordist to actually go and capture ambience of the real world location. We realize it's oh. a subtle detail. Yeah, okay, that's kind of cool. Those are the things um, that really make these maps come to life. We have done a pass playing all the old maps in 5v5 and adjusting things for that kind of setup. Where I mean, yeah, you definitely have to adjust some things for the new. A door. In the beta, we're listening to feedback, so we're going to improve 5v5. each map based on what the players have been singing. We've been working on these for a little while now, and we're really excited about it. Now we're that it's free to play, to I actually once people were able to play it, and I think it was an important do feel like they're going to gonna players hands. be more inclined here. OK, I want to see this. Though. <laughs> I love competitive. I hate it. I love it. Thing to a lot of different people, and we really didn't think we were providing enough tools and measures to actually help players out if they did want to improve. We're reworking our scoreboard to provide more information uh, to players as they're like, playing through the match. But then once they finish the match, we're actually going to provide an after-action report, so okay. you can look at the report. While you're in queue, oh, that's good. You can actually go into uh, your history. Oh, uh, wait, that, and look. that's kind of work towards providing you that. with information that will help you but that's improve good. your game. We've been getting feedback from a lot of different areas, from our, you know, community team, like streamers, influencers. We've also been getting a lot of feedback from Overwatch League players. We do want to actually provide a bit of like feeling of progression. So one of the other changes we're making alongside that is not making your skill rating quite so granular. Right now, it's a very hard number. Instead of a numeric skill rating, we're adding what? skill tiers within the larger ones. If you see someone at a really high skill tier, you know that that person is not just that good of an Overwatch player, but they've earned it. Um, could they explain that a little? They, okay, I, they won't, but One of the that's cool very, about Overwatch 2 is it has this new push very mode curious. Maps along with it. Push is a PvP game mode on several different new maps. We've been playing it in the beta, and we've actually been using it in Overwatch League as well. And once we started playtesting it, it was kind of an instant hit. There's a Of course it's an instant hit. It's a brand new team mode. And in the middle is TS1. And he's this lovable robot with a pair of barricades next to him. And the players are essentially fighting for control. And if they take control by taking out the other enemy team, TS1 will move a barricade towards the enemy base. To win, you either get that barricade all the way to the enemy base, or after a certain amount of time, did you move your barricade farther than the enemy team did? It's a very fair game mode. I liked it when I played it in the first beta. Provides for a lot of different like I mean, locations where a lot of It's just that it's a new mode. <laughs> I feel like it's a lot more we developed a appreciated. lot of engine upgrades in the game, so this allows us to do faster iteration. 
This was a huge effort by our engine team to allow the art team to build faster, more detailed environments in a shorter amount of time. You will get to experience the game world. We wanted to feel much more immersive. Okay. That's good, Overwatch that's good. Is a dream for audio features. It's everything we've ever really wanted to do. We, we really go into every little bit of detail, trying to Gotta find love the art. Uh, a way that every sound will cut through. When we started on Overwatch 1, we were really, really focused on the headphone mix. We, we thought for, you know, a PC first kind of game, we realized that people listen to Overwatch in all types of different places. So now we support home theater Dolby Atmos in the game. Now console. Oh, wait, that's actually a good thing. Too, like 3D audio. They supported Dolby Atmos headphones. There's new voice lines, new conversations between all of the favorite heroes. And we have so many, there'll be more that'll just come to the game over time. We've written 25,000 voice lines for Overwatch. Wow, that's a lot. So, tons of new features. And the reality is that Overwatch scales even beyond that. All well, the way up I think to that's a lot. Giant sports arenas for our Overwatch finals. Everything you like about Overwatch, you're going to get that in Overwatch 2, but even more. You know, we're really listening to that feedback. A lot of it we felt like, man, we really think this is going to be super fun. We just need people to be able to play it. October 4th is really just the beginning. I'm curious what they mean by early access because it kind of seems like because season one is starting and then Overwatch 1 will be fully transitioning October 4th. This October and I think October it kind of feels like a early access is just will continue to evolve that there's no PVE. But what does that mean? Well, PV, I'm well, curious if PVE will I cost money. Behind the scenes to talk with the team working on a new seasonal content. Because if PVE doesn't cost money, I'm so very curious how they're going to really integrate that. When Overwatch 2 expands post launch. Okay. We're really excited because people will just be able to just fully immerse yourself in the maps and the storylines and the heroes. With the new seasonal model, we'll be able to drop a ton of content in very frequently as we're updating the game through these big seasonal drops. We're looking at releasing heroes every other season and then a map in between those. And on top of that, we're looking at dropping a ton of content involving skins and oh. another great Ooh. goodies for players to get their hands on for each seasonal drop. We have so much that we want to do in Overwatch to so develop this game because we think it's the next step for us. We think there is so much more we can bring. I'm really happy moving uh, to our new seasonal based schedule. Making so a like, really huge commitment to regular updates. It's exciting at the same time. Because so they said every a new hero, we really want players every other season, and then a map in between? The game. So season two is new hero, season three is new map. Sure I don't remember. I know that there's a new hero. We're doing away with season boxes, two. What? Battle pass model coming in, and we have store as well, so the players will have a lot more control about how they interact with the game and how they Wait, acquire new content. Wait, no more loot boxes? We've been working on so many things over the past couple of years. I'm most excited for folks to see some of the new heroes that we've been kind of cooking up. That. Why we choose to make a hero? We're trying to follow. Not pick the hero that. That's interesting. Or do we need to create a hero that? That loop, that battle pass is going to be very important. That's too strong in a game. We've got two more supports and another tank in just the what? first couple of seasons and we're still working on new characters for a year, year and a half down the line as well. There's characters that folks have already seen glimpses of in the story and there's also characters that you've never seen before, never heard about. We were looking the at making soldier. sure the new heroes fit with um, this new very fast paced paradigm and less shields and crowd control. You can see a lot of that reflected in team play moments but with a much faster paced vibe. So three new heroes a year pretty much. We want to push every 18 the weeks the futuristic feeling that's that. there's a touch of sci-fi everywhere you look so kind of that was a bit more subtle and on the level of what over the first really overwatch was to feel that the world takes place in not so distant future coming up it also kind of rio, rio uh, new pvp map oh. pretty sure everybody's gonna love that one as well it's a great map it's close to the team many people on the team are from brazil so it was kind of fun to it kind of inject forces a deadline for each hero map. so i hope they There's continue takes place in portugal. they make it seem like There's they're going to be able to work on things faster He's from but i hope people from heroes still have personality and are not rushed and i think we captured it pretty at least in the game. It is um, a push Map, one of the on paper modes, and we tried some pretty interesting <laughs> layouts for this one so we hope the players like it we definitely want the game to feel like a globe trotting adventure 
no rewards. But wow, they're taking away loot boxes entirely. It really is like a free to play game. The current Mikvah skin that's in the works that I worked on actually is for Genji. He's got this kind of cyberpunk jacket. Whoa, okay, that's skin. sick. Mythic skins are meant to be this next tier of oh. skins above legendary. We want players to be able to go in there and pick and choose certain pieces meant to be this extra awesome oh. skin that you can customize. We're concurrently developing quite a few mythic skins. They're going to be released over the seasons. All this amazing stuff. All oh, that's what skins. that is. Charms, really so now it's going to be higher than legendary. Players to be able to that's and dress their character up. One of our core tenants. Interesting. I curious. The first person view. We want. You I, I want to see that in person. I think it said October fourth. There will be new mythic skins. So there will be there day one. The game anywhere that they're able to use it everywhere. So if you earn something on console or on PC or on Overwatch 1, you can always use it in anywhere in Overwatch 2 as well. And with each new season, That's good. there'll be a ton of new content and a new battle So they're well. really bringing everything from well, Overwatch so 1 constantly infusing the game to Overwatch with new content, 2. New heroes, new maps. So the game is going to feel fresh just all the time. There's always going to be something for you to do or to work towards. There's never going to be a point where you're like, gosh, I don't have anything to do. Being able to provide players with new heroes. It is going to be I, growing I, that and evolving. That almost kind of sounds so grindy. For us to explore as we move making forward. the battle pass seem like it's a huge it's thing. Be really exciting, really fun, with both PvP Which and usually PvP is for free-to-play games. Really great wow, they're really taking away loot boxes. I'm going to have to redeem my loot boxes. We can't wait for October 4th. We're just excited to be back. I mean, it's so great to see how much thought and care your team is pouring into uh, really elevating the game through post-launch season. So, you mentioned that PvE is coming in 2023. Now, can you tell us how the development is going? I actually just realized. To bring in these Does that mean that all the skins Overwatch. that you can't get, so that you weren't able to get in Overwatch, Overwatch 1, and, and are just never going to be... And through the years, we've developed cinematics animated shorts and graphic skins that you can never get again we just want to get deeper into the lore with pve we have an opportunity because if they're taking away loot boxes further, and you can only get skins through in ways that i guess you'll have to just have buy to oh no so we are planning to expand the you're gonna have to buy seasons that we just the skins and we will start delivering this PvE with points in that i'm certain will become PvE more difficult to get and that means we'll be able to deliver and tell more as Overwatch loot boxes are no longer opportunities to experience our heroes part of the game Here's a sneak peek at what we're working on okay the team's goal for pve and overwatch 2 is to basically move the overall story of overwatch 4. we've told a lot of short stories along the way there are a lot of to be continues it's time for us to answer those questions close off some of those stories ask new questions so the new game will definitely move the overall canon of the lore of Overwatch forward. Get those doors open! For the PvP live service, for certain seasons, you're also going to get some PvE maps. You'll be fighting Null Sector in at least some of the maps. They've come back and they're mad, so it's Overwatch's job to take them out. There's going to be content for you to immerse yourself in and continue to play over and over again. A lot of the older guys from the original Overwatch team, they're coming back but they need help with some of the younger generation like Brigitte and Lucio. So we're going to tell the story of how Overwatch basically gets back together. Another thing we want to do with uh, the story Spoilers. is more of where the characters are from. For example, Torbjorn is from Gothenburg. Players will get a chance to see what Torbjorn's factory looks like. You can play oh, cool. PvE with your friends and immerse yourself in the world and stay inside of it a little bit longer. Wow, this is incredible. You know, now that it's, it's so to get free to play, that I really am curious how... Is there anything you would like to say to the community watching? Yeah, we are so, is PvE... so excited for today, and we're so excited ah, for you all to, I was to see thought. So, everything that we if PvE is going to be free, you, I'm really probably going to be like how... For October 4th, it probably won't be that big of a deal then. Neither can I. Now, we'll also take a deeper look at a brand new hero... That's right, Junker Queen, who will be playable for the first time during the beta later this month already. Now, before we do that, though, we thought we'd take a look at Junker Queen's origin story to get to know the next great Overwatch character a little better. Paul, Aaron, we appreciate you spending some time with us today. Best of luck to you. 
and of course your entire team as you gear up for that launch. Let's take a look. So this is going to be the animated short. God, I am glad that I'm just glad they showed off a new hero. There's gonna be three new heroes. Um, one new tank. Uh, one new DPS and one support. Although at one point they said a new tank and two support, but then um, I think it was season two. There's going to be a new tank wow just wow what a which unbelievable new hero is and not into jungle queen but first uh I okay to introduce art director dion rogers and a few new faces to the show we have narrative designer Miranda all right so they're focusing on jungle queen which makes sense <laughs> it's, the, the, it's the here that was just announced so it was like a few Wanda. days ago yeah, thank you for yeah, having us yeah. i'm really excited to share this it takes like Literally four days ago. <laughs> I mean, the effort is clearly paying off. That short was just so much fun to watch. Now, it's been such an exciting week for everyone watching, but I'm sure for you three as well. Uh, players have learned that the next beta is coming on June 28th. Can you tell me a little bit more about what we can expect to see in this beta? The biggest thing is open to console players this time. We're going to add a new map, Rio. Oh, that's the new map. Queen will be playable finally. So this would be pretty fun. I mean, I personally can't wait to get my hands on Junker Queen. And is that it though? Like Junker right Queen cool and Rio? Well. Yeah. Uh, and that'll be on so console. Let's talk more about the newest Overwatch hero. I think it's super exciting. I know everybody has been really anticipating this character for a long time. She's been super prominent in our lore ever since the Junkertown map came out. And I think people have really I been still feel looking like forward to finally getting to experience it won't be that big of a beta. What makes Junker Queen so unique, and why do you think the Overwatch players will because love her? Because of the fact that the beta so, last Junker month, is interesting. Usually uh, when we started late April, Junker, early we to mid-May, was but she was kind of had very little. The Junker Town map. We started to create this map that was associated with Roadhog and Junkrat. This narrative started to appear where they've been kicked out of the city, and so we're like, who kicked them out? And we're like, well, maybe there's some sort of leader. So we had the kind of Junker Town decree that you can see in the level and then over time it kind of developed that it was a queen during the short we're actually developing her personality she's full of attitude you know that's what we love about her is um she she's really really strong but she's very that's good though i am i'm pretty glad there's gonna be a new support her, um is very interesting hopefully it's so not like that potentially can bad off what the, the game design will be it's great to hear that it's just such a collaboration with the overwatch team yeah this is this is a fun part about working together uh the overwatch universe it's filled with memorable heroes and as you said yourself ben it does take a village of dedicated developers to really bring each one of those to life but in a meaningful way so let's take a deeper look at the making of junker queen when we started on Junker Queen, first we have to decide what kind of role she's going to take. So uh, she's a tank. She's a really aggressive tank. You know, we didn't want her to be kind of a Reinhardt style, stay back and guard her, her team. She's got this very ferocious nature, and we wanted for that to be represented in her gameplay as well. Personally, what I'm most excited about Junker Queen is just her big axe, you know, just to be able to swing that thing around is awesome. It's always great to have some sort of anchor point to make sure we really incorporate this axe into her abilities. Her secondary we call jagged blade if you do your quick melee attack she will kind of swing with the blade instead of normal punch um it does a little bit of extra damage and okay. a wound on the enemy so she oh. can throw the blade as her secondary a fire wound. and it's really a great sort of skill shot to be able to land on the enemy especially like a moving enemy if you can land it and after you throw it she'll recall it and it the force of recalling it uh, if it's stuck into somebody will actually pull them forward so she can actually oh. kind of pull okay that's... if you can manage to stick that blade into somebody 
For Drucker Queen's ultimate, we have an ability called Rampage. She creates this kind of whirlwind of magnetized metal. And That's the ultimate. And it whirls around her, and then she dashes forward, and you try to go oh, as many enemies course, as possible I mean. and tag them all up. That also wounds everybody, which is really important because it, it's very easy to hit with this large area effect, so it heals you for a lot. But also, it creates a debuff on the enemies that reduces the healing that they receive to zero. Our sound designer has mm. done an incredible job with her. She's full of snarky fun to the way she plays. So all throughout her kit, there's little guitar sounds actually hidden. So if you listen to her act, she pulls it out and there's a big screech on the guitar strings and she pulls it forward. We have a wonderful actor named Leah who we found after a huge global search trying to find the right voice for her. Here I am. It's really amazing when the right actor matches the character and the personality. You feel this sort of magic that comes out of it. I think players are going to love her. She's scary. She's awesome. She's a departure from... I really wish they would show off. I mean, here. no. Eh. I'd love to see the new so sport. To work on and I'm just so glad to get Junker Queen looks out. awesome. The uh, Queen of Junkertown I mean, has I don't know. A, a new hero in general is just so exciting to see. We've been stuck with... I think Junker the last hero being shown being Echo for over two years. So just uh, seeing Junker, Junker Queen was huge. Been. And the old rulers of Junker Town have always been kind of content to just, you know, lord over the city. But Junker Queen, she has very big acts and big ideas to go along with it. What did you aim uh, to achieve when developing Junker Queen? We want to tell deeper stories for our heroes, have heroes that are connected to the world of the game. Big thing for Overwatch 2 is to move the lore of Overwatch along. So these type of heroes help with that. What are her abilities, and how do those abilities actually make her successful in the role she's in? What's pretty awesome about this hero, she was developed when 5v5 from the start. She was never a part of the 6v6 world of Overwatch. Knowing she's the only tank on the team, what abilities that will help bolster the team. She has this commanding shout. It boosts the speed and power <gasps> of the heroes around her. Oh. So, especially you need to push through a choke. She does the shout. All the players hear it. They move forward. She has a bunch of weapons. Oh, you know, that's. She, I think she named one of her weapons, right? Yeah, she, her her knife that she throws and pulls back is named Gracie. <laughs> yes, <right. laughs> a lot of her abilities kind of drain on the heroes and gives her health back. Her ultimate, basically, it shoots you forward and you do this whirlwind with her. Ass Man, it does bit like a big anti nade on everybody yeah. around. A tank that was very aggressive built and people are gonna have a from the beginning period. to be. Are there any the soul tank. Uh, you feel that Jungle Queen plays really well on She might game. actually be a bit OP, but she doesn't have like a shield. So maps that have a nice flank but then again, now that it's just one tank, like closer to tanks will have to be will have to perform well without a shield. Reckoning. So if they don't have one. Piece of news over the weekend that got the Overwatch community just buzzing uh, with excitement uh, was, of course, the tease of your new cinematic trailer, The Wastelander, uh, which we're going to premiere here in just a few moments. But before we do, uh, Ben, can you tell us a little bit more about it? I remember in the in the very beginning of our story room jam sections, there's talk about what type of story we want to tell, right? Uh, should we include Junkrat? Should we include Rohawk? But ultimately, I think we wanted to center focus our on focus on, on yeah. Junk, exactly, on our main character. It's a character reveal. It's potentially a sort of a revenge origin story, you know? Actually give a little bit more lore into Junker Town, how she become the queen, how was that society uh, being governed, you know, prior to... to yeah, they're explaining the... the well, you and the team, are you guys pour so uh, much love and time into these cinematics. They're explaining, yeah. These heroes, and it really shines through. I want to thank all three of you for taking the time to sit down with me today and sharing all of this amazing information. The shortest, right? probably. <laughs> I know the last thing. at home are on the edges of their seats, so am I, waiting to see it. So let's take a look at the world premiere of the Overwatch 2's new cinematic, The Wastelander, featuring the latest hero, Junko Queen. Ah, oh, it's like a whole reveal. Well, obviously the whole reveal, but it's like a, it's a, it really is a full short. Get out of my city. <laughs> what? I'm not allowed to have a bad dream. <laughs> God, 
I haven't seen. There hasn't been a new short in years. But, here I am. A free -for -all. but they're always so good. Knowing that the game is releasing on October 4th, it's good that uh, I probably, there probably won't, I don't think there'll be a third beta. I'm very curious about that PvE though. If it's going to be a paid expansion, then I'm very curious about the quality for it. But if it will be free, it's, it is also possible they could be waiting until Microsoft fully acquires Blizzard or Activision Blizzard. That could be a... Like they're working on it and then Microsoft takes over and then... They could say, oh, it'll actually cost money. But it's free with Game Pass. That could easily happen. God, this looks... A 
I'll give you the same mercy you showed my family 13 years ago. Get out. Nice. That was solid. That was... Quality. Quality short. Well, that about wraps things up for today here at Blizzard. I want to thank each and every quality one of short man this Make was overall sure very solid very solid uh overall a lot of details they where they were specific in a few things but uh overall that was very solid um probably gonna be the same trailer but i'm gonna end it here Thank you all for watching. If you like this, make sure if you're watching it as a YouTube video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, take care and have a good one. Peace.